Hey, and welcome to The Short Stuff. I'm Josh, and there's Chuck, and here's Jerry, and Dave's not here, but that's okay because this is short stuff, and that's just how we do it. And Chuck, I'm excited about this one because I had no idea about this, had never oh, yeah? heard of it, and uh, you totally scored with this one, so yeah, thank I'd, you. It wasn't too long ago. It was within the last six months or so I became aware of the Catatumbo Lightning. I, I think I was just looking through like weather phenomena because that's always interesting. Um, want to shout mm-hmm. out explorersweb.com, uh, scienceabc.com, nasa.gov, along with some other websites, uh, because there's plenty of websites talking about the Catatumbo Lightning. Yeah, I want to shout out Atlas Obscura, who I saw a pretty neat little two-minute video on. Yeah, I, I watched that and too. And learned some extra stuff too. So Catatumbo Lightning is this very specific, very isolated phenomenon that takes place ex- in one specific spot in Venezuela, on a very giant lake, Lake, uh, I'm going to say Marasaibo, Marasaibo. Okay. What do you think? I was going to say Maracaibo, but I don't know if that's a hard C or a soft C. Oh, that's a great one. (laughs) Let's go with Maracaibo. Mine was way too fancy. Uh, One specific part of this lake, even. It's that, like, localized. Yeah. And so you'd think, like, oh, okay, big whoop. There's some lightning that happens this one specific part of this lake. And you would be right if it weren't for the fact that these lightning storms take place at roughly the same time every day, about 300 days out of the year. That's right. And you're saying, okay, who cares? Still big whoop. You got some lightning. It is lightning such that uh, you are getting a possible lightning strike maybe every two seconds Yeah. during this time frame, such that it, it almost provides a near constant night sky light. It's that constant. Here's the other thing, too, about it that just makes this one of the most f- amazing weather phenomena around. It takes place over like nine hours. So every mm-hmm. night, almost 300 nights a year, this lightning strikes about 28 times per minute over this one localized area for nine hours. It's yeah, amazing. That's, remar- that's remarkable. And like you said, I mean, it lights up enough stuff that you can see everything. And there was actually a very famous raid from 1595 that Francis Drake was carrying out or about to carry out on the city of Maracaibo, on the shore of Lake Maracaibo, appropriately. And he was found out because of that lightning storm. He was seen before he could attack, and they managed to repel the attack. That's amazing. Uh, it's also known as the Beacon of Maracaibo. Uh, because it had served as a beacon for sailors over uh, over time. It's one of the oldest uh, lakes on Earth, uh, dating back to 36 million years. And it was a big shipping route. If you were going to the uh, port of uh, Cabimas and Maracaibo, you would go through there, and navigators would count on this lightning as a beacon. It's sort of like having a lighthouse around at all times in mm-hmm. a way, except a lot more dangerous, uh, because this does, I mean, if you're thinking like, do people get struck by lightning more there and killed more? The answer for sure is yes. Yeah, NASA calls it the lightning hotspot of the world, which apparently in the Democratic Republic of Congo, there, that used to be the lightning hotspot, but I'm not sure how it ever would have thought to have beaten the uh, Catatumbo lightning. But yeah. now it's now it's official. Catatumbo lightning, it's, it's it. Uh, if you're talking about... Um, the indigenous people, the Wari, W-A-R-I, they believed that it might have been the work of uh, fireflies paying tribute to their creator god. Which and that uh, was wrong, wrong, wrong. <laughs> it was wrong, but it's always it's always fun to hear those uh, what the early folks thought about things. Sure, but instead we now know exactly what's going on thanks to some friends at NOAA. Um, and I think we should take a break and we'll come back and explain how this works. Uh, what do you think? Let's do it. Okay. Okay, so the reason why this phenomenon is so isolated and also so reliable, it starts about after dusk, and again, it lasts for about nine hours, is because of the geography of Lake Maracaibo and where it is. Apparently, it's right about at the mouth of um, 
the Caribbean. The Caribbean is very nearby. So there's mm-hmm. a big steady supply of warm water that keeps the lake warm. Okay? Right. That's and, part one. Uh, yeah. And as we talked about in our wind episode, wind is created when warm air uh, rises and cooler air flows in to f- kind of fill its spot and even things out. But one of the other consequences of warm air rising, especially warm air in the tropics that's impregnated with um, humid Caribbean air, or yeah, humid Caribbean air, as it floats up, it starts to come in contact with colder air that often contains colder ice particles. And when that warm water vapor and those cold ice particles collide, they actually generate static electricity. And it's on a minuscule, minuscule level for each of these collisions. But if there's enough of them, and in this area there's plenty, uh, all of that stuff can create lightning, and it can create it in aces. That's right. Uh, And in the case of Lake Maracaibo, what's going on is you have these uh, it's sort of surrounded on three sides by these mountain ridges. Mm-hmm. So what that leaves is a, is a really narrow little pathway uh, to the Gulf of Venezuela where that Caribbean seawater is just constantly bringing in warm water through that little channel. And then you've got also, you know, you've got, you're in the tropics there, so you've got the sun that's also pulling moisture from the lake. And then you've got these winds. And I think they found, uh, there's this researcher uh, what's the, uh, Angel Munoz is very nice, right? Yeah. And, uh, Angel did a bunch of research on this, basically trying to, uh, predict a mod, like coming up with a model to predict conditions that might lead to occurrence of lightning and not, not just here, but period. And then applying it here to see like what the deal was. Yeah, because they used to suggest that it was um, uranium deposits or maybe methane deposits beneath the lake that were somehow electrostatically charging the air above it. But I guess they've never found uranium or methane deposits to support that, and it's not even clear whether that could happen. So Angel Munoz said, I I think I've got this figured out. He managed to trace and track um, the uh, the wind that's generated every night. And it's so reliable, it has its own name. He calls it the Maracaibo Basin Nocturnal Low-Level Jet. Yeah, he needs to work on that name a little bit. Sure. It should but at least be an acronym. Yeah, I was going to say it's not even. The N-B-N-L-L-J. Yeah, not a vowel in there. Anything. So because of the geography and the topography, that wind comes in every night and it's funneled through that little narrow mouth that you were talking about. But as it pushes along inward, landward, um, it eventually runs into those mountains that ring the the uh, lake itself, right? And when that happens, it goes up and it's pushing all of that warm air right up into that colder air. And this wind, this jet picks up about the same time every day around dusk. So there's your wind right there. And then you've got the hot water or the hot warm air that's full of water being pushed up into the colder air. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of interesting. So you have this air that sort of has a tidal motion going as well. Mm-hmm. So this air is flowing in and then receding again. And just the fact that it's it's happening at about the same time every day because of the way that everything just happened to be laid out and sit in just the right way yeah. to make this happen at the same time every day. Uh, well, not every day, but uh, what is it? 200 to 300 days a year? 300 days a year. And there was a period in 2010 where it went six weeks without it. And that was a huge deal because it doesn't usually do that. And they figured out that was because of El Nino bringing very dry wind in. Yeah, and to be clear, these are storms. It's not like you just sit back and watch the light show and it's just like this warm summer heat lightning or something. Like uh, oftentimes it's accompanied by really strong surface winds and it's I don't know what it's like to live there. I think about a what about a quarter of the population of Venezuela lives sort of nearby. Yeah. So Yeah, it's it's a lot of people. Yeah, I mean that's just every single day I guess they just count on these big big storms coming in. Yeah, so they've got the lightning show, the Catatumbo Lightning, 300 nights a year, and the Stormy, about 160 nights a year. That is a ton. So what's happening when it's not stormy, but you're getting the lightning? They're probably, oh, so I saw on that Atlas Obscura video that sometimes it's it can be like hundreds, 100 kilometers in the sky. Oh, uh, So okay. you get that light show, but so it's that eerily is, okay. quiet. All right. So that's pretty cool too, huh? Yeah, those are the money nights to be there, I guess. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, and I saw one other thing that 
I not only saw this here, I didn't realize it, but I had some Bader Meinhof stuff going on because there's this website called Futility Closet that is just an amazing website. Uh-huh. So I saw th- I saw this fact in this article, and then last night I was on Futility Closet and I saw the same fact. Ooh. So it has to. It, that means it's worth sharing, don't you think? Yeah, let's hear it. Venezuela supposedly it was named by Amerigo Vespucci, oh, okay. who named it Venezuela because when he got to the Lake Maracaibo region, he saw people living in huts on stilts. Mm-hmm. And it reminded him of people living in, in houses on stilts in Venice. So Venice apparently means little, or Venezuela apparently means little Venice. That's amazing. I thought so too. I think it's so cool. What else you got? I got nothing else. Well, I'm glad we explained it. I love ones that are like, this is amazing, and here's exactly how it works. So thank you very much, Angel Munoz. Thanks to Atlas Obscura, NASA, Science ABC, Explorer Web, and Futility Closet. (laughs) I love it. Short Stuff is out, everybody. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.